Cristiano, let me start just by asking you, why are you doing this interview with me? Because I think it's the time to say something. Um, and because I like you. <laughs> as simple as that. Well, don't say that in public. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like you too, and I appreciate it, because I think that you've had to sustain a lot of criticism this year in particular, probably more than at any stage in your career. And I think it's time to set the record straight and to clear up a few things, not least, I suspect, for the fans of Manchester United. You must be wondering what the hell's been going on. Oh, as I, as I say many, many times, the fans, they always... I'm always going to um, say good about them. They are um, the most important things in the football. You play for them. They're always in my side. I feel that every time when I go, when I walk in the streets, the fans coming to me and um, they appreciate uh, what I did, what I do for football. And for me, it's the most important in football. The fans, for me, is everything. I want to take you back to last year, last summer. You're at Juventus and there's massive speculation about where you're going to go. And the big rumour is that you're going to go to Manchester City. So first of all, how close was that to happening? Well, honestly, um, it was close. It was close. It's something that they spoke a lot. And Guardiola say two weeks ago, I guess, that uh, they, try, um, they try hard to have me. But as you know, as my history in Manchester United, your heart, your feeling, the way, the history that you did um, before make the difference. And of course, as well, Sir Alex Ferguson. So I was, I was surprised in the same way, but it was conscious decision uh, because the heart speak, speaking loud in that moment. You were a Manchester United legend. So when you say your heart led you, it's because of that, the history you had with the club and the relationship you maintained with Sir Alex, with the fans. I think it was, it was the key. It was the, um, the difference in that moment. But I cannot be loyal if I will, I will say that Manchester City wasn't close. Uh, but I think I, I did conscious decision. Um, I don't regret at some point. And um, as you mentioned before, uh, Sir Alex Ferguson was, was the key. Did you, speak, well. did you speak to him before you, you Yes, came I back? did. Yes, I did. I spoke, I spoke with, him, with him. And... Um, what did he say to you to try and persuade you? He said to me that uh, it's, it's impossible for you to come to Manchester City. <laughs> And I say, OK, boss. <laughs> <laughs> so I took the decisions and I repeat with very... I, I was with conscience that it was a, um, a good decision. You came back and it couldn't have started better. You played at Old Trafford. Yeah, you won 4-1 against Newcastle. You scored twice. Alex, Sir Alex was there, loving it, obviously, the return of the prodigal son. Your mother was there, the return of her own son. Uh, your mother was crying, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, yes. But what a, what a comeback. Uh, how did that feel that day when, when you came off the pitch? Well, that feeling was amazing. But not only the day of the game. I, f I felt before the week before that everything changed. The world speak about me, Cristiano back home, back where they belong. So it was a special, special moment to be back to Manchester United, to perform for... Uh, our fans and of course to score two goals was the best welcome that I received in Old Trafford. It was a memorable day and uh, unbelievable day too. The Viva Ronaldo chant went up? Yes, Viva Ronaldo. You like hearing that? Be back, of course I did. Yeah. As, I, as I told you before, the fans for me, they are everything. Two things happened, uh, I think, within 24 hours of you re-signing for United. One, you broke the all-time record for shirt sales in 24 hours. You actually beat a guy called Messi at PSG. <laughs> <laughs> you must have been happy about that. Of course I do. <laughs> uh, as, as you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I don't follow the records. The records follow me. So 
It's good. Another one in my in my book. And the other one was the Manchester United tweet announcing that you were uh, rejoining the club was the most tweeted or most liked tweet I think in Twitter history. It's good, as I told you before, it was a good moment. Nobody expect because things change around, in my opinion, in 72 hours, which is you plan or they spoke not only Manchester City, but other clubs too, spoke about your name, that you will change Juventus for another club. But Manchester United wasn't there, wasn't in, a, in that pot of that teams, but surprised everybody, even me, uh, to be honest. After a few weeks, things weren't going well at Manchester United. The club just wasn't firing. And in the end, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, the manager, got sacked. And that's within like two months of you coming back. What were you feeling about what was going on at United? And what did you feel generally about the club itself and the state that the club was in compared to when you'd been there before? Piers, to be honest, when I, I signed for Manchester United, I thought everything was changed because it's 13 years that I changed. Uh, I was in Real Madrid nine years and three in Juventus, and when I arrived, I thought everything will be different, you know, the technology, the infrastructures and everything. But I was surprised in a bad way, let's say, in that way, because I saw everything was the same. Uh, and Manchester, it wasn't, it wasn't in that moment that, as you mentioned, that Oli was sunk. Michael Carrick, he, he assumed the, the, the job for two, two games, Villarreal, and uh, Chelsea away, um, and everything was was so fast, but surprised me a lot. Uh, instability in the club, um, everything was kind of the same that I that I they hadn't moved on. No, they they stop on 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 a clock, in my opinion, which is something that that surprised me. I didn't expect, and. Um, Slowly and slowly, they start to change. Even even the the windows, the new players, and um, was tough. Was tough for me because I didn't expect that. And because uh, when you were there before, if Manchester United wanted a player under Sir Alex Ferguson, they normally got their man. Right now, it's a very different environment after many years of failure since Sir Alex retired. United weren't getting the top players anymore. So were you surprised by that dynamic changing as well? Because you would have been used before to them. If they wanted top players, they got them. I was surprised. I thought when I signed that they signed in that year, Sancho and Varane plus me, that things will be in the way that Manchester should be. As you mentioned well, Sir Alex Ferguson left a big gap in the club. Not only Sir Alex Ferguson, but one person that I thought make the difference. Uh, David Gill, mm. the president, a very, very good man. And uh, the structure around Sir Alex Ferguson was very important too. I knew it, that Manchester United wasn't the same, but I don't see that it was so big gap, so big things that go through by the last 10 years. And it was the thing that surprised me more, to be honest. It was little things like even the, the swimming pool that the players use, the saunas, all these facilities. Nothing had changed since you'd left in 2009. Nothing changed. Surprisingly, not only the pool, the jacuzzi, even the gym. Even some points, the technology, the kitchen, the chefs, <laughs> which is I appreciate, lovely, lovely persons. They stop in a, in a time which is, is, it surprised me a lot. I thought... I will see different things, different, as I mentioned before, technology, infrastructure. Um, but unfortunately, we see many things that I'm used to see when I was 20, 21, 23. So surprised me a lot. You'd also, of course, as you said, you've been at Real Madrid and Juventus, where you saw them moving all the time to progress with technology, the latest thing to improve performance levels. So you were able to compare what you'd experienced there with what was not happening at United. In United, they, the progress was zero, in my opinion. Um, to compare with Real Madrid and even Juventus, that they follow 
the recent world. So the, the, the technology, especially the terms of, of training, nutrition and um, conditions of uh, eat properly and to recover uh, better than before. Surprised me, uh, Manchester right now to compare with that club, I think it's, it's behind in my opinion, which is, is something that surprised me. A, a club with this dimension um, should be in the top of the tree, in my opinion, and they are not. Uh, unfortunately, um, they are not in that level, but I hope the next years they can reach to be in a top level. When you look at, I mean, United have had some of the best managers in the world follow Sir Alex Ferguson, and they've all been relative failures compared to other stages of their careers. Do you think that partly that's down to the the structural element of this, that there just isn't the support that top managers need? I don't know what's going on, but since since the um, Sir Alex Ferguson left, I saw no evolution in the club. The progress was zero. For example, we have an interesting point that how the club as Manchester United after suck um, Ole, they buy, they bring sport directive Ralph Regnick, which is something that nobody understands. This guy is, is not even a coach. A bigger club like Manchester United bring sport directive surprise not only me, but all the world, you know. Well, it was a ridiculous decision, wasn't it? Of course, in my opinion, it's you have to be honest. If you're not, if you're not even a coach, how are you gonna be the boss of Manchester United? It's something that I should see that Manchester did not follow, not the right way to reach the successful like other teams, like for example Liverpool or Manchester City, Chelsea. They are. Uh, one step behind or two uh, because of this kind of mistakes, in my opinion, that they, they should improve and change probably the um, the staff or or the people, uh, the directives or presidents. I don't know who, who is the who is the problem there, but since did, it, did that... it show a lack of ambition to you when they replaced Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, who a lot of fans liked, but he obviously wasn't delivering the big titles that United wanted and were used to. But to appoint someone like Ralph Rangnick, I mean, I'd never heard of him. And I'm thinking Nobody. if Nobody. And I'm thinking if, had you heard of him? No, of course not. You'd never heard of this guy? Nobody, and the people who I speak, nobody knew it who was him. And suddenly he's, you, did you call him the boss? Of course, uh, I, I respect, we have to call because he assumed the, the job. Uh, regardless, the, all the coaches that I had in my career, I call them boss because if they assume the, the job, we have to call in that way. But in the end, uh, deep, deep inside me, I, I never saw him uh, as a boss because I saw some points that I never agreed and uh, he stopped in the time as well because if you're not being a coach, uh, the, the, last, the next five years, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna lost the identity of to be a coach. So surprised me a lot, but in the same way, don't surprise me a lot because if you see the structures, keep, they keep in the same, so the coaches didn't surprise me, but it was a tough moment. What was extraordinary was very quickly after Rannick took over, he started briefing journalists that you weren't pressing enough and that maybe it would be a good idea if you moved on from the club. And I'm like, who is this guy? And why is he saying this to the man who's scoring the goals? To be honest, Pierce, it's something that I... I don't understand. It's the new coaches that coming around. They think they find the last Coca-Cola in the desert, which is I, I don't understand. The football there invents uh, many, many years. So, but I respect uh, any coach have a different approach, different opinions, diff different mentality. But kind of some points that you are you not agree. So I'm always like that in my life. I'm always been beside the best coaches in the world, Zidane, Ancelotti, Mourinho, Fernando Santos, Allegri. So I had kind of some experience because I learned from them. And when you see some coaches that they're coming, that they want to re revolution the football, I not agree. I, I, I have my opinion, 
they agree or they don't they disagree but it's part of the the business because I'm in the end of the day I'm in a club to win and uh, with my experience I want to help like always and I some coaches that don't accept and uh, you know it's part of the job did he know what he was doing running or not at a club like United no they don't um, they knew it the club very well but they don't know the, of the dimension of the club inside the history of the club which is for me surprised me even more which is when you the soccer all is so scary you should bring a top manager not sport director did you think he was right to to get rid of Solskjaer or would you have kept him on well it's not uh, well I love uh, Solskjaer I think it was a top person because what I what I keep inside my heart it's the heart of the persons and Oli for me is a top person coach of course he wasn't he, he didn't he didn't look for what he what he wants is hard is hard to assume after Sir Alex Ferguson but I think he did a good job for for sure he need more more time but I'm never doubt that he's going to be a good a good coach in the future but it was a good experience. I was, I was so pleased to work with him, even a short period. What about the younger players and, and specifically their mentality? Because it seemed to me, just from what I was reading, that when you were originally at Manchester United as a young 18-year-old, that you had huge respect for the older players, the Keens and these guys in the dressing room, and you would soak up their experience, their exactly. wisdom and so on. Did you get that same respect, do you think, from the younger players? I don't mean that they don't respect the experienced players or the oldest players. I don't, I don't, I don't think that word is the, the best one, but they live in a different era. Um, I can't see my kid, they have 12 years old. The mentality, they are not the same, they are not suffered that. What's the difference? The anger. I think the, the anger. anger. I think that they have the things more easily. Everything it's easily. They don't suffer, and I think it's they don't care. I don't mean only a few in Manchester United, but all the teams, all all leagues in the world. The the, the youngers they are they are not the same of my generation, but we cannot blame blame them because it's part of the life. You know the new generation and um, the the new technologies that avoid uh, they distract them for another thing so but they are not the same they are, they listen but this is why we have two years you listen from one side and they go away from another side so don't surprise me but in the same way it's a little bit shame because if they have the best examples in front of your eyes and if they don't at least copy what you did for me it's kind it's kind of weird because i remember when i was 18 19 20s i'm always look to see the best players, Van Nistelrooy, Ferdinand, Roy Keane, and uh, Giggs. This is why I have the successful that I have in longevity, because I take care of my body, my mentality, my head, because I see these guys and I learn from them. When you try and give advice to these younger players, what, what do you say to them? What do, you, what do you try and guide them to be like? I think the best advice, I'm not the kind of guys to like to give advice, I prefer to be as example, yes. Because I'm I'm an example. I'm there every morning. I do it the same stuff. I'm probably the first ones to arrive and the last ones to to go out. I think uh, the, the the details speak for itself. So, because as I as I told you before, um, they listen one thing and in two minutes they already forgot and do it whatever they think it's 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 better. This is why I say. I like to lead by example, mm. and uh, some ones they follow me, not much, but... Uh, see, I find that, I just find that incredible, that if I was a young footballer and I had Cristiano Ronaldo at my club, that I wouldn't want to spend every second watching him, listening to him, observing the way you go about your business. And yet, from what you're saying, clearly, that's not, they're not interested. They don't care. Some ones, yes, but most of them, no. But for me, it's not surprising. Uh, don't surprise me because they're not going to have 
longevity careers, in my opinion. It's impossible. It's impossible to see, for example, my generation, you see many players, they, they reach 36, 37, 38 in high level. I think this generation, you're going to count by your hands, how many are going to reach in that level. Because this years of preparation, it helps a lot. Who are the players in the world that you most admire for their mental strength, their attitude? It's it's difficult question because I'm I'm always can say what I see from my eyes. For example, if you tell me what I see, for example, in Manchester United, I can mention probably Dalot, Diogo Dalot. His example is young, but he's very very professional, and I'm not doubt that he's gonna reach, he's gonna have longevity in the football because he's he's young, he's smart, intelligent, and he's very professional. You have a few ones more, but like him, it's it's difficult to see. Probably Martinez, um, Casimiro's thirties, uh, um, but I will say Dalot. So the Rannick's come then. You've, it's your second manager. It's not working. The results aren't great. You're still scoring goals regularly for Manchester United. You're about the only one who is. But then you get hit by a, a, an awful episode in your life. Probably the worst time of your life, where your partner, Georgina, she's pregnant with twins and is actually giving birth to these two babies. And your baby son doesn't survive. And I don't think I can imagine, I have four kids, you have a lot of children. You know, you can't imagine a worse thing to happen than to go a full term of a pregnancy, particularly for the poor mother in that case, but also for you. What was that? like for you, that, that time in your life? It's probably the worst moment that I passed through my life since my, my father died. You know, uh, when you have a kid that you expect that everything will be normal and you have that uh, problem, it's, it's hard, you know. As human being that I am in Georgina, we had quite difficult moments because we don't understand why happened to us uh, was difficult to be honest was was very very difficult to to understand what's going what's going on in that in that period of our life as you know the football carry on they are so fast many competitions the football don't stop we are many many competitions and pass through in that moment was probably the most difficult moment that I had in my life me and my my family especially Geo, that was was tough. She said um, she was giving an interview about the new series of her TV show, and she said in an interview, "A big piece of my heart shattered, and I asked myself how I could carry on. I had the answer nearer than I thought. I looked into the eyes of my children, and there I saw the only way of doing it being all together." Yeah, I I, I saw too. Yeah, this is why what we did. We I grew up my. My family, especially Gio, and um, we had the difficult moments, but we said, listen, we have more, more kids. We have one that born, Bella, that we have to be happy to. I mean, it's such a difficult situation, again, where you're mourning the terrible loss of your little baby boy, but also celebrating the birth of your beautiful yeah. daughter. I try to explain sometimes to my family and even my close friends, they say, I never felt to be happy and sad in the same moment. Yes. I never felt. It is hard to explain. Um, so difficult. So difficult. Mm. It's, you don't know if you cry or you don't know if you smile. Yes. Because it's something that you don't know how to react. Uh, you don't know what to do, to be honest. And of course, I remember very well that I look like, I don't know the word that to define what I felt in that moment, but it's it's crazy feelings, it's crazy emotional. But as I told you before, I I I have to to hold that we had at least Bella, yes. which is, is the most important. One die and one survive, but it was it's difficult to explain. Uh, How did you explain it all to your other children? 
They must have been so confused about In the beginning, uh, Gio arrived in home and uh, the kids start to say, where's another baby, where's another baby? Of course, Cristiano, I had conversation with him in the, in the day. Uh, because he's 12 years old, he knows, he, know, he understands everything. And I had a nice conversation with him. We cried together in his bedroom. And he explained, and it's kind of... He didn't understand. He understand, but in the same way, he was a little bit confused. The other ones, in the beginning, in the table, the kids start to say, Mom, where is the, um, uh, the other baby, blah, blah, blah. And Gio, in the beginning, they start to say, because, you know, she, she had a little bit mm -hmm. belly, because they had two, it's hard process. And after one week, I say, you know, let's, let's, let's be frontal, let's be honest with the kids. Let's, let's say that uh, Angel, which is the name, they go to the, to the heaven. It's better to say in that way. Yeah. And uh, we start to use in that, in, that, uh, in that way. And the kids always understand when we had shots in the table and they say, Daddy, I did this for Angel. And they, they point out for the, for the sky, which is I, I say and I, and I like it the most because, yeah. you know, it's part of the life. And I, I'm not going to lie to my kids to say the truth, which is, is, was a difficult process. But in the same way, I become more, more father, more friendly of them. They become more, more close to his daddy, especially me with the Georgine as well. Yeah, I was going to ask you that because these things they can, they can make or break relationships, because the grief can be so intense. It can drive couples apart, or it can bring them closer. In my case, it was more, was better in that way. I become more friendly of Gio, I was of course friend, but I see more, more lovely for her and for my, for my kids. And I start to see the life with a different perspective. You understand which is, is coming the point of, if you're gonna mm. ask me for sure, the pre-season moments, yes. for example, why I didn't go to the pre-season. Yes, so I'm gonna come to that, yeah. But it was just to finish in that, that chapter was the most difficult moment the last, since my dad died, it was this moment that I passed through the last six months. Do you feel your son is, is with you in spirit? Do you feel for that? sure, for sure. His ashes is with me, like my daddy, they are here in really? my house. Yes, yes. It's something that it's, I want to hold for the rest of my life. I'm not tr throw to the, to the ocean or to the sea. I keep with me, they are next to my to my daddy, I've, I didn't know if you, you check, I have a small church down and I- oh, you do? Yes, I do. Like a little chapel? Yes, huh? chapel, and I keep my daddy and my son. Do you talk to them? Yes, I do. Um, I, I, I talk with them every time and that they are in my side. They are, you know, they help me uh, to be a better man, to be a better person, to be a better father. And it's something that I'm really, really proud that the message that they send me, especially my, my son. Amazing. You had an extraordinary reaction from football fans, obviously from Manchester United, but I think you must have been just so surprised by the outpouring of not just support, but Liverpool fans sang on the seventh minute of their next game, you'll never walk alone. The cop, the great infamous enemy of... Manchester United. What did you feel when you heard that? I never uh, ever expect that. Never. I had the opportunity now to to say all English community, thank you a lot for that kind of that they had with me, not only Liverpool, but all England. I felt I was at Arsenal when you played and on the seventh minute, the whole crowd. I received I received you. a letter from the Queen family as well. Really? Yes, I do. Which is his from the Queen herself, or yeah, family, yeah, and um, surprised me a lot. Offering their condolences. Yes. Wow. Unbelievable. This is why I say I respect a lot the English community, English people, uh, because they they've been very kind uh, with me, and in that difficult moment of my life, was spectacular the way they treat me, me and my family, uh, in that difficult moment. I I should say straight to the crown and thank, thank, thank you to the old English community that helped me in that moment. The, when the Queen sadly died in September, you posted a very nice tribute to her. 
was part of the reason because of, of what they had of course. been like with you? Of course, they've been so kind of with me and um, this is why I did what I did. Uh, but it was an unbelievable moment. I'm never ever going to forget that moment. You have a little girl, Bella. She's six months old now. Must be a, a great joy amid all that terrible sadness. Unbelievable. It was another member in the family. They are the, the shine of the house. And uh, we are so proud. Me, uh, Georgina and all, all my kids, they are, they are very, very proud for them. They are, they are spectacular, a beautiful uh, girl. And we are so happy. We are so, so happy. We are, we are uh, happy fathers. You're going to have more? I'm not thinking now to thinking more kids. I think we, we're done, but we never know. The future, only gods know. But right now we all want to, to have a break, to enjoy these ones because they are little, Bella six, and the rest, they are five, and Cristiano 12. We want to enjoy a little bit of these ones. Let's see the future. It's very difficult to play top level football at the best of times. It's a hard business in full public glare of millions of people watching. To have to go back and play after this must have been incredibly hard for you, even with your mental strength. How did you find that? Difficult, very difficult to, to play after that. But as I always have good support from my family, and Georgina told me, go, go to play, go enjoy, to do what you like to do. We're going to help for you to forget, forget a little bit the situation. It was difficult, but in the same point, I think helps. It helps for you to, you know, to don't think much about that. Even to training was good. But as you know, the, um, the football going so fast and, you know, trainings, games, uh, even the national team, <clears throat> The things going so fast, you don't even have a time to settle and say what's going on, you know, because the things going so fast. <clears throat> but it was good help. Uh, Georgina helped me a lot to give me that possibility to say, listen. She's, she's a very strong woman. Yes, she Georgina. did. Georgina. Yes. I mean, really strong. Yes. To, to, just to be your partner is probably not an easy time a lot of the time with all the attention all the time. But to go through what she's gone through and still get we up help, and be there. We help you. each other. But she struggled uh, when, he, when she was young, which is she now, she look at life in a different, with a different eyes. Even she's young, but she suffer. you know, she's she born in Argentina. She have his issues with his family as well. She live alone. <clears throat> she have interesting uh, life yes. and histories as well, history. And she helped me a lot. She's very mature for his age. We, we help each other. Sometimes when I'm a little bit down, she pushed me up. And I do it to the other side. So we are a nice couple. We help each other. So I'm really pleased that she's, in, she's on, on my side. Any, any movement on the, the wedding bells, Cristiano? I'm not thinking now about that, but <laughs> I can see in the future. I think I deserve, she deserve, but... It's something that's com not coming now in my, in my plans, but in the future, I yes, yes, I want. Four days after this terrible time in your life, United get a new manager, Eric Ten Hag. Did you know much about him? A little bit uh, through Ajax, the job that he did for Ajax. You end the season with 24 goals for Manchester United, including 18 in the Premier League six in the Champions League. You were second in the golden boot for the uh, English football. I mean, by any normal yardstick, that's an incredible performance. And yet you were still getting criticised. It was almost like, well, it's got to be your fault, even though you scored all the goals. Were you as bemused as I was that you were becoming the focal point for the criticism? I think it's easy, it's easy to point out when you want to cover other things, to, put, to point out Cristiano Ronaldo. It's, it's, it's easy. Everyone now that that press... They want to they wanna put me in the first page because they know they will sell more, the interesting will be different. And I'm used to live like that because when I was 37, uh, I know and I learned many things. Um, when you are in the down of the wave, when you are in the top of the wave, it's, you don't realize and you don't see things that 
you don't see before, which is I appreciate to have bad moments to see which people is in your side, who criticize you more, because they're looking for that. Um, they don't like to see successful people. The people only try to bring negativism. And I felt the last four or five months that not only with, for me, but even for my family as well, for Georgina, especially around the world, the press criticized me even more. I, I, sometimes I don't, I don't understand why. Even uh, Portuguese press, that they criticize, criticize me a lot. I don't understand, but I still believe that the jealousy is part of that. Um, they want to cover many things that helps to, to, to shine other things. But listen, Pierce, I know I'm 20, uh, 21 years in the top of the game, so I know how it takes. So for me, it's not a problem. It's, it's, it's hard when you are a little bit down to listen to this criticize. Do you, do you read it all? Do you read newspapers? Do you read social media? A good thing that I have, it's I don't like to read because I know 90% uh, of the times they lie. They are garbage. The press, they are garbage. Not all of them, but most of them. They don't say the truth. Um, and they lie. They constant lie and they constant attack me and my family. They're always negativism against my family. Why I'm going to read? Because I know they try to, to, to make me feel bad, me and my family, which is, is, is something hard to deal. But in the end of the day, I understand. But it's, it's really, really hard. The problem you have is you're too famous. You are the most followed human being on Instagram that you have, I just checked, 495 million followers. I have just under 2 million on Instagram, 8 million on Twitter, <laughs> so I'm catching you on Twitter slowly, but, but 400, you're nearly at half a billion followers on Instagram. I mean, that's insane. You're bigger than all the Kardashians put together. It's good. It's good. I feel proud for that. It means, it means a lot for me because it means that people like me too. I'm charismatic, I think. Why I'm the number one? Sometimes I ask, ask that question to myself. Why me? and not another one. Why do you think it is? To be honest, I, not just only because I, I play good football, because everyone knows, but I think the rest is, is relevant. You have to be charismatic. People have to, to feel some connection with you. I think to be good looking helps too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have the same problem. Yeah, I feel the same way. To be honest, Chris, I don't know the real reason, but I think I'm charismatic. And I'm, I'm, I'm appetitive fruit. I don't know if we a what a fruit that oh, yeah. people want to bite. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know the, the, how, how you can say in English. Any particular fruit, or let's like say nice peach? strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know the the reason. I mean, what's incredible to me is the the power you have. Appetite, to, to... appetite, appetite, appetite fruit, appetite fruit. I don't know if it makes sense in English, but if it don't make sense, you'll learn. I'll, I'll research appetite for it, yeah. Okay. I mean, I have a pinned tweet, and it's you telling me I have good abdominals, which is a very good observation. <laughs> and it's only 10 seconds long. It's had 43 million views, this clip. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, because oh, 43 million people have heard the guy who actually has, has got good abdominals <laughs> tell me I've got good abdominals. But it showed me the, the sheer firepower you have in that what in that world of social media it's just extraordinary is 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 what i what i told you before um i have uh, i have good things which is is you you can sell your own product let's say in that way but you have to to deal with many obstacles in your life too do you care if people hate you i mean a lot of people love you but obviously a lot of people don't you're so big, you're going to get both. But do you care about the ones who I care, hate Cristiano Ronaldo? I care the people who like me. I'm not waste time for the people who don't like me. I think it's waste of time. These, these people, they are, they are not interesting on in my life. I'm, I, I like to be surround, around the people who love me. I don't, I don't waste my time to, to see the criticism of people who is next to me, 
ex players, for example. Uh, I well, don't I mean, care one of your that. biggest critics has been, and I'm surprised about this. Me too. Wayne Rooney, for example, who you played with for many years, very successfully, and were good friends with him. And yet, all this year, three or four times, he's come out and attacked you in the media. Pierce, I don't understand. Uh, you should ask this question to him, but I don't know. Um, I don't know why he criticised me so bad, or I don't he says, believe he that says, he's jealous of me. He says, your behaviour is unacceptable, United should sell you, you know, blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's way rude. It's surprised like me. A... It was one year ago or six months ago here in my house. He pick up his kids here and invite Cristiano to go to his house to play football. I, don't, I really don't understand people like that or if they want to be in the cover of the, of the paper, of the news, or they want a new jobs or whatever. Is it jealousy as well, perhaps, that you're still playing and still in the probably, Man United? Probably, because he finished his career with 30s, so I'm still playing high level. I'm not going to say that I'm looking better than him, which is, is, is true, but... <laughs> But it's, that is inarguable. I mean, there's no contest. It's, it's hard to listen that kind of criticise and negative about people who play with you. For example, Gary Neville as well. Yeah, I mean, Gary Neville, you blanked him the other day uh, on the pitch and he looked quite upset, actually, because um, he obviously likes being your friend. But he's been pretty critical of you as well. When you people have, can, have, can have his own opinion, but they don't really know what's going on for example, inside the, the, the training ground and Carrington area or even my life, they should listen not only one point of view, they have to listen my point of view as well because it's easy to, to criticise, but if you don't know the old story, it's, it's, it's easy, you know. But it's, Pierce, as I said before, it's, it's part of... Are they of, still friends of yours or do you have a line where... They are not my friends, uh, they are colleagues. We play together, they, they're not coming, we not have a dinner together, for example. But as I told you, Pierce, before, it's part of my journey. They, kill, they keep cri criticizing me, negativism every time. So I follow, I continue my, my trip and uh, I have to catch up the people who like me. Some of your ex-colleagues have been incredibly supportive. Rio Ferdinand has always got your back. Roy Keane always has your back. Whatever happens, he's always supported you and has continued to do so. Does that mean a lot to you? It means a lot because they, I was in the dressing room with them. They are part of my journey in football as well. Uh, as I mentioned many times, Roy Keane for me was my best captain ever. Rio Ferdinand helped me a lot. He was my neighbour, I was his neighbour. So very, very good guys. Not just because they speak good about me, but they, they was there in the dressing room. They are football players. They know how players thinking and the behaves, etc. And to listen ace, ex uh, colleagues or teammates to criticize you when they always see uh, one point of view. Do you feel a bit? But do you feel a bit betrayed when they do that because yes, do. You, because you play together? It's easy. It's easy to criticize. I don't know if you have a job in television that they must criticise to, to be more famous, I really don't understand. Do you think they use your name a bit to get attention? I think they take advantage of that because they are not stupid. And I really understand and I have to carry on with my life with criticise criticize or, or when the people speak good about you, but it's hard when you see people who was in the dressing room with you criticising that way it must hurt. It's not good. Yeah. Yes, I did. But not hurt. I, I, I'm not going to be more slim. I'm not going to sleep bad because of the mm. criticize. But it's not good to listen to that. Disappointing. A little bit, yes. Disappointing. Do you have more pounds in the bank or more Instagram followers? It's <laughs> a good question. <laughs> Probably similar. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably similar. Uh, I'm just trying to work out how Wayne Rooney could hate you even more, and probably that's the answer. Well, <laughs> not only him. Imagine <laughs> the rest of the rats, they're going to criticise me too. <laughs> but it's good. It's good to be still number one. If you, you see the... Make, something that makes me happy too, if you see Forbes magazine every mm. year, I'm in the top of the list, so it's not by coincidence too. But knowing you, I don't. it's not the money so much. It's just you want to be at the top, right? I mean, that's what... I think what drives you, someone said to me, what drives Cristiano Ronaldo? I don't think it's money. I think it's being the best. 
beating people. It's exactly. a competitive streak. The, the records, the adrenaline. But, Pierce, let's, let's, let's be uh, honest. The last years, the football change. I see football now as a business, to be honest. Sometimes, uh, Georgina, I have an expression that I don't understand. They treat you, they treat you players like a piece of meat. I say, yes, you say everything. It's true. When they want you, when they, 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 they count with you, they give you everything. When they don't, they try to, to make a hard life to you. I see football piece the last years as a business. I saw many, many things that I'm disappointing. The passion for the game is still intact. But in the same way, I, say, I saw other things as well, which is, is surprised me. But in the same way, uh, it's part of the business because if you see the world, uh, how it is in the moment, it's, it's all business. Everyone takes it on itself. Everyone, they are more individual. Well, you become a commodity, don't you? Where if you can sell record number of shirts in 24 hours, great. Right? But if suddenly the team isn't performing well and they need someone to blame, it looks to me like at Manchester United, the default position is it's got to be Cristiano's fault. Exactly. It's always, always my fault. The problem is always me. I look like I'm the black sheep, right. which is, is I don't like. If you do it good or if you do bad, they're always going to find some, some criticise. Even in the national team, the last three months, as I told you before, the criticise was so bad. I mean, not only in football way, but professional and family way as well, which surprised me a lot. Looked like I was a bad guy, which is, is not true. People have to listen from my mouth the real, the facts as well. This is why I give this interview, because I, thought, I, I think it's the, the right time to speak out of my, my mind, which is what they say the last four or five months is completely garbage. I'm not going to say 100%, but 99% it was garbage. People say false things or lie things. Which, which things have annoyed you the most? Family issues. Um, well, I want to talk about one in particular on that, which is when you were late back for the pre-season training, a lot of speculation because you'd said several weeks before that you wanted to play Champions League football and that you were maybe looking for another option because it didn't look like United would get to play Champions let, let, Let's make my points, for example, the pre-season moment. And after you mentioned uh, new clubs or yeah. the interesting. For example, the pre-season, I had a very, very bad, which is I don't say nobody. The people who surround me, they saw, friends and even my, my mom. I had uh, some problems in vacation that my young daughter, they have a little problem, they have bronchitis which is sustained. Bronchitis? Bronchitis, really? yes, yes. Your she's, little baby then? Yes. I was in Mallorca in holidays and she stayed one week in hospital, which is, was, you know, you don't enjoy a lot and the so, vacation. And after what had happened, so why? Exactly. And the people make, make up histories that they say that I don't want to go travel. Pierce, they, people have to understand that I'm a human being. I'm always going to be in my side of my family. I'm not negotiating nothing behind that. You understand? And I even have the, the lectures of, from the hospital, the, the feedback of the health of Bella, which is, I'm not showing nobody. Nobody asks me, I, have, I keep for me. People forget that I'm a human, human being, <clears throat> that I passed through a difficult moment. Well, you must have been worried sick. I mean, you I was very worried. You've lost very your baby old. son, and now your baby daughter's in hospital. Exactly. And you must have been absolutely... I spoke with the directive of and the president of uh, Manchester United, and then kind of that didn't believe that something going wrong, which is, is make me feel bad. Really? Yes, I, yes. They didn't believe you? They believe you, but in the same way, they are there. I never piece ever gonna change uh, the health of my family for a football, never. Now, or... 10 years uh, behind or forward. And it's something that really hurt me because they doubt of my words that I struggle, especially Bella and Gio. We had one week in hospital because the Bella have a big problem. And I didn't go to the preseason because of that, because I didn't, I didn't, was allowed to left my family if something happened. 
to do it a pre-season because I think it wasn't not fair to left my family for a pre-season. This is why I didn't go. I mean, that would, if my employer didn't believe a story like that, that would, I would be so angry. Because everyone, I'm not mentioned only in that, in that Manchester way, but in the world, especially in the football world, they are very, very, very individual. Everyone, everyone, everyone on, uh, look for themselves or themselves. They don't care about your moments, your struggle moments, your issues, family problems. They want you. They want you. Doesn't matter your family problems. I don't mean Manchester, but in a general. As I told you before, the football goes so fast. You have many competitions, many games, pre-season, World Cup now. Listen, we have last. Uh, you have one game, after three, four days, you have to be in the national team, preparation for the World Cup. It's hard. Sometimes you have to sell everything and, you know, be with your family, take the best decisions. And in this summer, I didn't feel comfortable. I feel uncomfortable the way they treat me, especially the, um, the press. They doubt about me, the professional that I am. It's impossible to be 21 in the top of the game, if you're not professional, they, they, they doubt about me, which is make me feel very, very, very sad because in my life, I'm always one of the best professional. This is why I still play in the high level. You play in a pre-season friendly and you leave the ground early with several other players. And there's another huge fuss about this. What was the truth about that? Had you? got permission to go? Do you wish you hadn't left early now? Ten Hag wasn't happy, it was reported. What's the truth? Yes, I'm, I, I will be honest with you. Um, it's something that I regret to left from the stadium, probably. Or maybe no, I don't know. It's difficult to, to tell you 100% if I'm... But let's say I regret. But in the same way, I felt uh, provoked by the coach. I, I don't, I'm not allowed for me uh, a coach to put me in three minutes in the game. Sorry, I'm, I'm not that kind of player. I know what I can give to the teams. You're talking about the Tottenham thing? The Tottenham Yeah, player. I'm talking about uh, in pre-season, there was a friendly where you left the ground with several me other players. Me and eight players. Right. So but they mention only my name, Yeah. which is, is... Everyone do that. I don't understand why they mention only about, about Javi Vela kind of play, game. Last year, many players do it the same. In that game, eight players do it the same. So, but they only speak about the black chip, which is, is me, which is, is I completely understand. OK, it's done. I apologize to the coach. And for me, the chapter was, was closed. It seemed to me that right from the start, Ten Hag wanted to show you who the boss was. He dropped you, he benched you, he mucked you around, he talked about you in the press. Were you getting that feeling? I mean, did you feel that... The feeling, he always mentioned to me that I didn't need the pre-season, so I should wait for my opportunity. I really understand. I should, well, OK, I understand. But I'm not going to give you points, but he don't do it the same procedement from, to every player. I'm not going to mention players, but they don't do it the same way. Second, I understand that he coming a new job. Manchester was so bad the last five years that he should make, they should clean the house, let's say in that way. Mm. But the way they approach, the way the press make this so big, it's because probably the, the communication wasn't the best. Um, but I, I, I really understand in the beginning, because I didn't do the pre-season, I don't start to play. But going more farther than that, farther than that, other things happen that people, they don't know. And I'm not, I'm not uh, hiding that the empathy with the coach is not good. I'm, I'm, I'm honest. You don't have a good relationship with him? I'm not mean good relationship. The empathy is not, it's not good, let's say. Do you think he respects you? I think you don't, you don't respect the way I should deserve. Um, but it is what it is. This is why probably 
the, the game against Tottenham. I'll well, I want to come to these two games. So against Manchester City, where United got destroyed, he didn't bring you on. He brought on other strikers, but didn't bring you on. And I felt insulted on your behalf. I was like, well, surely against Manchester City, if you're losing this badly and you've got the greatest player of all time sitting there, you at least give him some time, don't you? But he didn't. And he said afterwards, the reason was he had too much respect for you, he wanted to respect you. When you heard him say that, what did you think? Excuses. I say as excuses. Um, I sell many things that um, I don't want to. I don't want to criticize him. He can. He can have different opinion than me. That they choose the players that they think is better for the team. I respect that. But the excuses all the time. You know, the excuses have short legs. You cannot excuse all the time, which is things that don't make sense. Okay, you don't put me against Manchester City because of respect of your career, and you want to put me three minutes against Tottenham. Well, that's the thing. So then you then play Tottenham. Don't make sense. And then he wants to bring you on with three minutes to go, which is the complete opposite to what he said the situation was with City. I think he did, he did, he did purpose because, for example, in the national team, the other clubs, if the coach wants to put me five minutes, if someone injured or, or if they really need me, I will help. But in that way, I felt provoked not only because of that game, but before some He history. was deliberately provoking you. Well, everyone, everyone know that. Everyone Disrespecting know that. you, you think? Exactly. This is why I say I don't have respect for him because he don't show me respect for me. This is why we, we, are, we are in that situation. Uh, I, have to be, I have to be honest that the things don't going well because of that, because the empathy don't exist. And he keep, uh, he keep saying things for the press, but the press say what they think it's, it's, it's good to protect probably him and Manchester United. But as I know, as I, I understand many things that he signed three years contract with Manchester United, probably I'm not going to be too much long in Manchester United apart when I'm finished my contract. I really understand, but I like guys that they don't lie, they speak honest, they be frontal, frontal. And I'm not neg negotiate my morals. My morals always will be intact. And what, what's going in my, in, my, in my things the last two months was um, not respect in many ways, which is it I can regret, for example, against Tottenham to left the stadium before uh, the finish. Well, there's a video clip which appears to show Ten Hag telling you to get ready to come on and you gesticulate back to him, I'm not going to do that. And as a result, you get suspended for the next couple of games and he goes public and says it's because you refused to come on. And you did then issue a statement of some regret saying, you know, you're a professional and you've never been suspended before, I don't think, yeah. in your entire career. I mean, when you look back at that, I guess my question would be, you've always been very acutely aware of your role model status around the world. Do you wish with hindsight you hadn't done that and handled it a different Probably. way? I regret to left the stadium. Yeah. But I was, as I told the Pierce before, I didn't felt that he had respect for me to put me on three minutes after the issues that we had before. Um, I was very, 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 very disappointing for the communicate of Manchester United, to be honest. I never had a problem with any club, with any coach, and they suspend me three days, which is, is I felt a lot and it was and 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 level of sport clubs, I felt a lot, and it was a shame. Was it humiliating for you? I think so. Yes, I have to to say the truth. What I felt, I remember, I arrived. I, I arrived. Well, I don't. I don't want to say. I don't want to say details. What he pretend to do it, but I, I'm not going to say that. But I remember arriving home and Cristiano see me. Daddy, you not go to the game? I said no because. The club punished me with three days, and he did like, <laughs> how, how are they going to punish you if you are the best player in the world? And uh, you're not going to play? You say, no, I'm not going to play because I, I'm not being, I'm behave. Mm -hmm. And he looked at me like, my daddy, not be behave. What? In one way, I was good because I was like more relaxed, but in the same way, I feel very disappointed because, okay, 
I regret, I apologize, I'm not perfect, I commit a mistake, but to suspend me in three games, uh, three days for that, I think it's too much and they, they make fire for the press, which is, is really disappointing me. And that seems to have been the pattern of the way Ten Hag has wanted to treat you since he became manager. Just constant attempts to disrespect you, I guess. Many, many points uh, happen. I think in some certain points, I think was strategy from the club for me to react like that. Because they wanted you to leave? Probably, yes. They're trying to force you out. Yes, not only the coach, but the other two or three guys there around the club. At uh, the senior executive level? Yes, that I felt betrayed. And you think they're trying to get rid of you? Honestly, I should not say that, I don't know, but listen, I, I don't care, I'm always, people should listen to the truth. Yes, I feel betrayed and I felt that some people that don't want me here, not only this year, but last year too. They didn't want you to go there at all? No. Really? No. Yes. The owners of the club, they listen, they don't... The Glazers? The Glazers, they don't, they don't care about, about the club. I mean, professional uh, sport. As you know, this Manchester is a marketing club. They will get his money from the marketing. The sports, it's, they, they don't really care, in my opinion. Do you ever talk to them, the Glazers? Never. Never? Never. Not since you've gone back? No. They give all the power to the president, the sport directive. A lot of Manchester United fans are very negative about the Glazers. They think they're taking all the money out and not spending enough on players, on the infrastructure issues you talked about. Do you think the fans are right? The fans, are, they're always right. I think the fans should know the truth, should know that the players, we want the best for the club. I want the best of the club. This is why I'm coming to Manchester United. This is why I love this club. But you have some things inside the club which is don't help to Manchester reach the top level as City, Liverpool and even now Arsenal, for example, which is, is complicated, it's difficult, um, it's hard. In my opinion, it will be hard for Manchester to be in the top of the game the next two, three years. If, if, the, they glazers, don't if the Glazers stay as owners? I'm not mean the, the Glazers, but... The structure. The structure. Um, as as uh, Picasso say, you have to destroy it to rebuild and if they can start from me, I'm, for me it's not a problem. I'm always going to say I love Manchester United, I love the fans, they're always on my side. But if they want to do it, different era, different generation, they have to change many, many things. When you walked away at Spurs and didn't go on, Gary Neville said your behaviour was unacceptable, called for you to be punished. He said he knows what he's doing, he's experienced and players of that power have a real negative impact when they do it. The influence they have on other players is really negative. And it was after that that you gave them the old blank treatment, uh, which was very funny, by the way. Um, but for Neville to say that about you? They can't, they can't, they, they only, they don't see the big picture. Why I react like that? What's happened? All the behind the scenes. All the behind the scenes. I was probably not provoked. They will accept to play three minutes after the whole situations that going through the last two months. Don't tell me that top players, the guys who won everything, the key players, will play three minutes. Come on, this is unacceptable. After what they keep saying before, that they respect me, they do this, they do that. For me, it was not respect. This is why I take this decision. I regret, I've, I apologize to my teammates for the situation, I did a post in Instagram. I regret to left from the stadium. Uh, I regret my teammates, they know what I felt. I say to them, apologize. But in the same way, I'm not regret to take the decisions to don't coming on. I'm, I'm like that, I will be always like that. If you don't have respect for me, I'm never gonna have respect for you. And the coach didn't have respect for me, so this is why the relationship 
it's it's in that way and he keeps saying in the press that he can't with me like me blah 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 blah, blah but it's only for the press really yes 100 percent so where are you now in your head with all this because the world cup is about to start you're going to go there with portugal and we'll talk about that in a moment uh, with a very exciting team actually um, but where are you with United? They won't be playing again now until after Christmas. That leaves a few days before the January transfer window. Do you think you'll still be a United player come January 1st? It's difficult to tell her right now because, because we, my mood is right now to the World Cup. It's probably my last World Cup, of course, my fifth World Cup. I don't know what's going to happen um, after the World Cup. But as I told you before, and I will say again, the fans will be always in my heart. And I hope they've been in my side, uh, even if I'm back or if I'm not back or if I stay or whatever. Nobody's perfect. Episodes in the life we all have. Uh, it's part of the human beings. It's part of me to be a human being and father as well. I always will commit and mistakes, uh, but I don't know. It's hard to tell you right now what's going to happen in the World Cup because my focus is only for the World Cup, for the Portugal national team. If you had your time again, knowing what was going to happen, would you sign for Manchester United again? As I told in the beginning, I'm always took my decisions by not emotional moments, but maybe this this decision I took by emotional. I'm not regret uh, because I took with 100% conscience, but it was more emotional than rational. I don't know if it makes yes. sense. Uh, but it was good. It was good because I was happy when they left me be happy. So I tried to give my advice, my experience, uh, to help Manchester United to be where they deserve to be. Um, I don't pretend to be more smart than the other ones. Nobody is smarter than me, but I'm not smarter than nobody. When I arrive in Manchester United, I always be available to help the team to do the good things, to put in the right spots, to compete with the best teams. But it's hard when they they cut your legs and they, they don't like you to shine and they don't listen to your advices. I think I, I, I have a word to advise to the club because the trophies that I won, individual and collective, I think I can help a lot. But when the infrastructure is not good... What's amazing is you ended last season with hat-tricks, you're scoring hat-tricks for fun, one against Tottenham. You know, you were playing... Great football, but you were starting most games. And now this season, you barely started any game. Something happened. You know, I'd imagine you're a bit like a racehorse, right? If you don't start. I did indeed the preseason. Right, right. Is the, is the excuse. Right, which is I ridiculous. I did the preseason, so. Do you think if you'd been able to just do what you did last season, you just sca carried on scoring? For sure. You think I, 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 I did learn to score goals? <laughs> Maybe I'm not motivated that I'm supposed to be, probably. As I told you before, Pierce, I'm a human being. I feel the things. I'm not perfect. But my motivation is not the same that I was, that I was a few months ago. Um, I hope to change. Do you feel like you need a fresh challenge? I'm not saying if it's fresh, fresh challenge, but let's see. Let's see. I'm not, I cannot answer right now because my focus is for the World Cup. But I don't know, maybe it's good for Manchester and better is, and probably it's good for me as well to have a new chapter. Probably, but I don't know. If, if I will be back, I will be the same Cristiano. But I hope people being on my side and let me shine like I did all the clubs and all years. What is the truth about other clubs making offers for you? Some people have said there were no offers at all. I happen to know that there was a gigantic one from Saudi Arabia. I mean, for example? Like 350 million euros for two seasons, is that? It's true, of, yes, it's I mean, true. That's a staggering sum of money. Yes. Which you turned down. 
in that moment, yes. I mean, that to me says you're not just about the money. It's what, it's what I'm going to mention now. It's, they say many, many garbage things that if you are an agent, what are you going to do? You go the clubs, but George Mendes, for example, have more than 100 players. And they go Chelsea, they go Arsenal. They always mention Cristiano Ronaldo. They offer Cristiano. Please, let's be honest. Who's the most expensive player, salary player that Premier League have in history? It's me, even with 37 years old. Why they're gonna even they even offer me to Sporting or Napoli? I will be honest with you. You don't. Ha I didn't have many many clubs, but I have many many offers of the other clubs, right. which is I didn't change because I didn't plan to do it, but I have. But what the press keeping say and the garbage press say that nobody want me, which is, is completely wrong. And um, I was happy here, to be honest. I was motivated to do, to do it a great season here. But, but they continue to repeat. Nobody want Cristiano. How, how they don't want a player who last year scored 32 goals with national team. I mean, that's well. the point I don't get because there are people out there and you see them, you hear them, and they say, well, he's not the player he used to be. As if somehow at 37 you're going to be as good as you were at 21. Anyway, Come on. everyone changed. But you are the greatest 37 year old anyone's ever seen, right? And you're still extremely fit. So it just seems to me nothing's changed from the player I saw banging in hat tricks last season, except that you have a coach who doesn't want to start you. A few months, what they're going to change? There's nothing. Do but you feel like you can still normal. be a top player? But for me, it's it, it, it's stupid question when the people say, ah, they are not the same. Nobody is the same. Day by day, we're getting old. Every one of us, you understand, is normal. You have to adapt. And I think nobody in this game have this brain that adapts with his age. I'm not, I'm not want to be cocky to say that I'm the same that when I was 20. Of course, no. But I'm adapt and I be smart to know my strength, what I'm good to do. Mm. And I'm still playing the high level and I score goals and I will continue to score goals if my mind is clear and happy, and if the people surround me that help me to be a successful player, especially the coach, the president, and directives. But when you feel that the energy don't go surround you, it's difficult you to be yourself, which has happened. This is what's happened with me. But what they say the last three months is completely garbage and wrong. They say that I offer me this and that, and many presidents and directives speak about they reject from it. It's completely yeah. lie. They lie because it's, it's, it's not what's happened. I had many clubs, not many, a few clubs that they want me to sign and I didn't go because I feel comfortable here. This is the truth. How easy is it to turn down £350 million to kick a football for two years in Saudi Arabia? It's hard. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard. But in the same way, I, I thought that I was very happy here, that I'm still capable to score goals and make people up. Is people it also have... that you want to keep playing at the highest level? That you want to play Champions League football? You want to keep breaking records? Is it Again, it comes back to my gut feeling about you that if it was just about money, you would be, you'd be in Saudi Arabia, right? Earning this king's ransom. But you, that's not what motivates you. You want to keep at the exactly, top. Exactly, because I thought, I, I, I still believe that I can score many, many goals and help the team. Because I, I, I still believe that I'm, I'm still good and capable to help national team, even Manchester United. But if you don't feel surround you that the energies is on, in your side, it's difficult. Of course, the criticism is going to exist all the time. I, 37, is still not the same. But I want to see if some guy <clears throat> of my age maintain the level that I, that I show. I'm the fourth guy in history of football with more games. No goalkeeper, no goalkeeper, which is I know how to be good, how to be fit, how to protect your body. You're not going to teach me that. Nobody going to teach me that. I know. Are you as fit as you've ever been, do you think? Yes. Yes. In this moment, I feel very, very good. I expect to have a few minutes more in my legs. But I saw yesterday I have 1,000 minutes plus uh, 118 from the national team. I still go I'm still feeling good, fresh. I believe that I'm going to do an amazing World Cup. I'm prepared physically and mentally. But, Pierce, is it, it is what it is. Uh, life is good. I'm good. My mental is good. I'm happy to do this interview with you. I know they're going to generate many 
polemic. Of course. But Christian. But they would polemic. anyway, right? I mean, they've all had their say, and now you're entitled to have your say. And you know better than anybody because you are Cristiano Ronaldo. They criticize me when I don't speak. Of course, when I'm going to speak, they're going to criticize me even more. But it's something that I can, I can deal with that. Uh, I know I'm going to disappoint a few people. Maybe I'm going to make up a few people, but it is what it is. The life is it's completely difficult. We have obstacles in our lives. And um, I will keep running to fight against the people who don't believe me. And the life is a challenge. And I want the people, the people that they are wrong when they say that. I'm if not you do leave United, and I accept that this is not a done decision either way, but if you do, and it seems to me like it's more likely than not as we sit here, what would your message be to Manchester United fans who've had to read all this stuff all year and probably have a very mixed idea about where the truth lies? What would you say to them if you do end up leaving? It's hard, it's hard for me to say that I will not be back to Manchester United. But regardless, as you say, it's, it's, let's see what's going to happen. But as I told you before, the fans for me always will be in my side, will be always in my heart. I see during the days when I go to the street, the love, the passion that people have for me, um, the respect. I hope that they never forget the things that I will continue to do it, not only in the past, but in the present too. Manchester will be always in my side. The fans will be always in my side. doesn't matter what's going to happen. And I appreciate the love that they send for me all the time. Even when I'm done play, uh, we, even when they, when they criticize me, they always will be in my heart. So thank you to all the supports. I hope to see you soon. And uh, they always will be in my heart. And what about Sir Alex, the man who persuaded you to come back again? Really, a, like a father figure to you, really, in, in many ways, like another, another father to you. What's his take on everything that's been happening? What's his opinion of all this? I don't speak with him like one month ago, but it's always on my side. He always understands me. He knows that, he knows better than nobody that the club is not on the path that they deserve to be. He knows, everyone knows. The people who don't see that is because they don't want to see, they are blamed. The fans, uh, they are always the answer and the passion for the game. Manchester belongs to the fans, but they should know the truth, the infrastructure, they are not good. They should change. If not, Manchester not gonna be where they used to be what, when Sir Alex Ferguson, David Gill was. Mm -hmm. And um, I hope to be part, if they count with me, to help the club to be successful. If not, the life will continue. I will continue to, to my journey. I will continue to make fans happy uh, and score goals and do it uh, tricks and everything. And um, it's good, it's part of my journey. I wanna just, Talk to you briefly about the World Cup. Um, your fifth World Cup, I mean, you say it's your last, but I mean, you'd only be 41 at the next one. Could we have a sixth World Cup potentially? Will be tough. Will be tough. So this may be the last one? Probably, yes. You've got an exciting team full of experience and young players, Portugal. Are you optimistic about your I'm chances? I'm very optimistic. We have a fantastic coach. We have a good generation of football players. I'm looking forward that we're going to do an amazing World Cup. I hope the Portuguese belong in our side. We need them. We need them. The fans. The fans. We have a little bit of debate in Portugal from some issues that they should pick more other players, that it's normal. A little bit negativism, to be honest, from the press, from some people maybe ex-players as well, but I believe that we're going to do it a, world, a good World Cup. Would that be for you the, the pinnacle of your career, to win a World Cup with Portugal? Pierce, I don't, I don't, I never, well, I dream one time about that. Um, Holding the World Cup? Yes. It's going to be tough, extremely difficult, but everything is possible, but 
Of course, we're going to compete. It's hard to beat. Who are the Who Portugal. are the biggest rivals? Do you think we are not the favourites? Who do you, are who never, do you, we are who never you, favorites. No, of course, but who do you, you were the favorites when you won the Euros, Exactly, right? exactly. Who do you think are the ones to really watch? Who are the best squads out there? Probably France. France. Um, I will put Spain, Argentina, Germany. Brazil? Brazil, of course. They look good to me. They look good. But after coming, the Portugal. So... Everything is possible. What about, you haven't mentioned them. Um, <coughs> ah, England as well. Yeah, 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 of course, England. You think England have a, have a chance? I have a chance beside Portugal, in my opinion. Uh, but let's see, will be different, will be in a winter. Is it weird playing at winter? Do you care? Do you care? I don't really care, to be honest. A part of the issue is that the country, wherever they try to, to, they try to speak now that it wasn't not good option to do it there, but they should do that before. We, are, we should focus only in football, the competition, to people to enjoy. Do you think all the politics and the mor morality debates and stuff, should that all be left aside now? 100%. Focus on the, on the of game? Of course. I feel that. Of course, they should, do, they should do that. That debate should be had before you award exactly. the country. Exactly, exactly. They should concentrate it in, in all competition, all the national teams, the people to be welcome in a... In, a, in Qatar, and uh, I, see, I see a good tournament, to be honest. I think Qatar, they are prepared. They are prepared for that. And it will be weird to play in the beginning of the season, yes, but in the same way, a challenge. Mm. I think it's, to be honest, it's good. I feel good. I feel with good energy. So what about this idea? You get to the final. <laughs> Portugal, the Argentina. You score two. Messi scores two. The last minute, 94th minute, you score a third for your hat trick and you win the World Cup. Is that, be honest, it's too good? Come is on. that the dream? It's too good. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Too good dream. But if it happened, ah, oh, come on, it's, it, it, that's it's, the dream. Can scare, it can score another player. I don't care. I don't care. If the Portugal be in a final and score, even the goalkeeper, I will be the most happy man in the world. But if if this happen, come on. I will say I will finish football if this happens. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, you retire, right? Yeah, I retire. 100%. 100%. I mean, it may well be Messi's last World Cup. He's never won it either. I mean, you are, you know, you're linked forever, the pair of you. To me, the greatest there's ever been. You're number one for me. Uh, Thank you. He's number two. You're number one to you. <laughs> he's number two. Um, but it's an amazing relationship you have, even though you're not, I know, great friends or anything, but you're always respectful when you see each other. Very, all what do you, the time. What do you think of him, Messi, now? As you both head to maybe your last World Cup. As a football player? Yeah, and as a, as a person. Amazing. Player is magic, top. As a person, we share the state 16 years. Mm -hmm. Imagine, 16 years, we... we At the highest level. We level. share. So I have great relationship with him. I'm not friend of him in terms of when I mean friend is the guy who ha who is with you in your house, who speak on the phone. No, but he's like a teammate. He's a guy that I really respect the way he always speak about me. Even his, his wife or my wife, my girlfriend, they always respect. <clears throat> They're from Argentina. My girlfriend is from Argentina. Yeah. So good. What I'm going to say about Messi, great things. He's a good guy. He's, you do everything for football. The it's best player you've ever seen? Excluding yourself? Probably, yes. Him, Zidane, mm. probably. Uh, yes. That I play, fight with him, yes. Have you ever had dinner together? Never. Would you like to? Why not? One day to sit down yes. and... Yes. Uh, listen, I, I, I can love... I, can I come? I love, of course. <laughs> I love to meet people. I love people. You know, I love... I love to share things, ideas, learn things, mm. ideas, new histories, new brains. Mm. Why not? I will do it for sure. I will do it. That would be... That In a few years. Yeah. At the bat, as Maradona and Pele did. Yes. No problem. Come on, I'm a, I'm a good person. I know I have, I have a good heart and, you know, I'm, <clears throat> I, don't like, I don't like to, you know, to criticize people is not the way I, I took my life. Everything is positive. And if there's like a weird sequence of events and Mbappe goes to Real Madrid and 
PSG ring you up and go, we've had a great idea. We want to put Messi and Ronaldo everything up front. It's, everything it's possible in, in, uh, in football, so... And that would be incredible. Why not? I don't know. I don't know. As I told you before... Yeah, they'd sell some shirts. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure they will sell a lot of shirts. But, as I told you before, um, the, life, the life is good. And my focus right now is to do it amazing World Cup. Are Arsenal going to win the Premier League? I hope so. You do? Manchester first. If not, <laughs> if not, Arsenal is some team that I like to see to play. Did you rate the team at the moment? Yes, I do. I like the team. I like the coach. I think they, they do it a good team. And uh, if Manchester United don't win the Premier League, I will be happy if Arsenal do. What would you like your legacy to be, Christian? I mean, well, let me ask you first. Do you have any plans to retire? I mean, how long do you think you can keep playing football? I want to play two years more. Two years more? Two, three years more, maximum. I want to play with... I want to finish with 40. I think we'll be... A 40. 40. A good age. But I don't know. Uh, I don't know the future. Sometimes you plan... You plan one thing for your life, and as I told many times, the life is dynamic, and you never know what's going to happen. Tom Brady in America, the great NFL quarterback, retired. Then he has a conversation with you on the Old Trafford pitch, and whatever you said to him... I'm psychologue, so... The next day, he comes out of retirement. Psychologue, you see? I'm good psychologue. What did you say to no, him? I thought, I thought he, 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 he took the decision a, a few weeks before. Uh, but it was good. What did you talk about, you two goats? You speak about in a general. He's a very, very smart guy. Uh, he knows a lot about football. We have a nice conversation. And, did uh, you score the hat-trick that day, didn't you? Yes, I did. He gave me good energy. When I have good, en good energy... When you have me, another goat in the stadium, does that fire you up? Exactly. When you it's have it's a goat, goat thing, right? Yes, yes, yes. Energies. It's all about energy. When you, are, when you have good energy around you, I can be interesting things. What about Jordan Peterson, who I know came to see you? Amazing man. Yeah, because I've interviewed him a few times and he was fascinated to meet you and to talk to you, both about private things, about what had happened to your family this year, but also about professionally you and your situation. I'm, I'm a huge fan of him. I, I read his book, 12 Rules, uh, and I felt that he's a really, really interesting guy and I love to meet smart people. When I, when I spoke with him, it was to meet him as a fan, mm. because I knew that he do his speeches around the Europe, especially in England, UK. And um, we have a nice chat. He coming to, to my house and we speak, he give me good advices and uh, fantastic man. Mm. And I learned a lot, some advices that he gave me, not only what for was this the best, moment. What was the best advice he gave you? We had a nice strategic conversation, not only for the moment of my life, I mean not only for football, because my life is not resumed only for football. I have, I'm a businessman, I have you know, and many important things on my life. And when you are surrounded with these people, for, with you as well, people that make your life more interesting, they reach something in your daily life, I appreciate because it's that kind of people that thinking outside the box, mm. which is I, I appreciate. And we had a nice conversation, strategic conversation, not only for the moment, but for the future as well. He gave him some points that I never expect, but the beginning was to meet him, a good person, an intelligent person, and uh, was fantastic. And I, we keep in touch, I speak with him. It's good. You're going to do Cristiano Ronaldo's 12 rules to life? Why not? <laughs> For the future. Maybe probably. 20. You've got more rules. Exactly. For the future, probably. I want to I wanna educate it. I want to educate it, not only my family, but my fans. As you know, I have a lot, millions of fans. Yeah. Probably for the future, I want to do it some book, but not the type of book. As I've, got, I've got a good idea for you on that. I yes. told you. It's good. a good one. But to help people how to be, how to maintain longevity. And also, I think in your case, how to survive life, right? There's a lot of people out there who are struggling to just deal with life. And the one thing you do better than anybody I've seen in sport is 
resilience, mental strength, right? That's what it's really about. I think about. it's the most important thing. And I, I can see me in the future, of course, I'm, I want to improve my English. It's very good. It's much better even than last time I interviewed. Yeah, but I, I have to improve. I have to do more interviews. <laughs> I have to improve. I know. And I'm, 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 I, I, I want to improve. And I see myself to do it when I'm retired to speak for millions of people, advices, yeah. how to be a professional player, how to maintain your longevity, how, I'm not a psychologue, but I pass through many, many things and I can You know, above, pass, all, above all, how to win. How to win, which is the most important, I think. It's what it's all about. I have experience to, to inspire people for that. I think I'm, I'm a role model. And I, I can help many, many people in that way if they want my help. They I will want to listen help. to it, right? For sure. Especially the young people. I want to be with the young people, to speak with them. Not only for them, but for the fathers as well, to put them in, a, in the right spot. Cristiano, what a pleasure. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Piers. It was Quite a pleasure for me too. Thank you. Thank you very much.